Humans have thrived on the land for centuries. They have created vast civilizations and waged war. But what if they were forced to live underground permanently? I split 100 players into three different colonies, each containing workers, farmers, scouts, navigators, and an overlord queen to rule them all. They were all placed inside a giant cavern with no resources or guidance whatsoever. The rest of what happened was completely up to them in an insane story you don't want to miss. I present to you. This video was heavily inspired by Ish13C, Magic Gum, and I Has Name. If you wish to participate in events like these in the future, subscribe, like, and join Discord server, link in description. And the event began. Go, 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 go. Um, teams were spread out around the map with each different biome containing many unsolved secrets and mysteries. But here's what the players knew. Almost the entire map was underground. However, there were still ways to get all the items they needed. They also knew that as long as their queen was alive and on the server, they would be able to respawn permanently. With no limitations, players rushed to be the first to break down a tree and explore this brand new world. Some of the first adventurers, after exploring, found a new biome called the Blue Zone. It contained more ores and mushrooms than the green biome, but had limited food and wood. Each team sent out scouting parties to investigate this new land and bring back the needed resources. In this map, there are a few biomes, each biome containing a different amount and rarity of loot. The biomes went in this order from easiest to hardest. Green, blue, purple, and then ice. And there were also sub-biomes which contained other resources such as redstone, emeralds, etc. Currently, PvP was turned off to prevent instant death, but in the middle of day 2, PvP was going to be enabled. Feeling confident, many players began to venture deeper and deeper into the cave system, as they knew that was how they would get the best loot. After some confusion, players realized that diamonds were located in these purple pillars scattered across the purple zone. With this knowledge, a frenzy began to be the first one to each of the crystals. During this frenzy, a few players got too confident and suffered the consequences and died. Teams began to group up and find a spot to settle down, unaware of the threats that each environment had. Each team chose a place to set up base in their own different areas. With Blue being the first to find the ice biome, they set up camp in a plane that happened to be laying around. Red decided to choose strategically and set up camp in the purple biome, hoping for the best loot. And Gold set up camp in a giant mushroom in Blue with many resources surrounding them including ores, water, and food. With day one coming to an end, each team had to vote on a leader to lead them. Blue decided to switch leaders to Zeni Senpai, or, as he would later be called, False Hacker. Red decided to elect Spartanator as Queen, and they finished setting up their base in Purple Biome. Gold chose to elect X Katsu as their Queen, and finalized their base at the Giant Mushroom. Teams continued to progress and took advantage of there being no PvP to raid other teams' bases and steal all the goods they could while all not being attacked. Can you get this guy out? He's stealing our stuff! The main thief were members of Red. These members went against their queen's wishes to maintain a diplomatic solution and stole from both Blue and Gold, the two strongest teams, decreasing relations and making enemies out of both Gold and Blue which were far more stacked than red due to the circumstances of their position. Since blue was in the snow biome, they had easy access to lapis and were able to enchant easier than the rest of the team. Gold was also working on getting enchanted gear due to their position and central location on the map. They worked on getting enchanted diamond gear, however slower than blue. In case of an emergency, I had each queen elect a second in command. For whatever reason, if the queen could not get on that day, the second would take over and act as a respawn beacon until the original queen returned. Red chose AJXD, Gold chose some guys, and Blue chose O'Trumpy, the winner from the last of 
event. Sitting in their bed, currently had no friends and only enemies, they did not want to be caught out in the open and decided to move to a more secluded area where they'd be less likely to be attacked. The area they chose was the red sub biome. It was hidden deep inside the purple biome and it was very difficult to find unless you had the cords and knew where you were going. Some members of each team were friendly with the other side and spent more time at others' bases than their own. Halfway through the day, I turned on PvP to prevent loot theft, and immediately after, Blue and Gold each killed a member of Red that had stolen their loot earlier in the day, and then decided to continue to get stacked, viewing each other as a threat. However, while they were planning, Blue had something else in mind. They were still very mad at Red stealing their loot, and wanted to plan a conquest. They were going to set out a hunting party to chase down Spartan, the Red Queen, and put an end to Red permanently. Members of the hunting party included False Hacker, Otrempi, and five other members of Blue to go out and hunt while the rest worked on getting stacked. While Blue was planning the conquest, some guys got too close to Blue's base without realizing it. And seeing an opportunity for gear, Blue jumped from the sky and swiftly took out some guys. There's also a feature called Custom Crafts. Custom Crafts, as the name implies, is a custom craft. Basically speaking, we did this in order for players to get items they could no longer obtain without this ability. Each recipe was different and there was a lot of them, but some of them included god apples, blaze powder, and unique items that gave you more health or more defense when holding them out. The first team to be able to get these overpowered items would hold the fate of the game in their hands. The clock kicking down to zero, day two was officially over. The day three beginning, Blue was bloodthirsty and the Crusaders were ready. Earlier they had tried to convince a member of Red to turn against their queen for safety with the Blues. However, the member declined the offer, but in doing so, revealed where their base was. With this information, the Crusaders were sent out to find and hunt down Spartan. After searching for Spartan, they found him and gave chase. Spartan was with two other members of Red, and seeing the odds, they knew they had to protect their queen at all costs, or die trying. They started to do kamikaze attacks where they sacrificed their lives in order to slow down the advance of the Crusaders, and when they were killed, they would simply respawn on the queen and continue to annoy and harass the Blues. Spartan fled for his life, running down the riverways of purple, then blue, then green. The Blues were never quite able to catch up to him because of the Queen's defenders, but were still pursuing and waiting for Spartan to slip up and strike the fatal blow. Spartan knew there was no way to fight the Blues, and escape would not work unless they get fixated on a new target, and he had little food remaining, so he had to come up with a plan. Spartan was well numbered and caught off guard. His only hope was to lead the blue to the gold's base, which was at the center of the map. It was a race against the time, trying to escape the frantic onslaught of the Crusaders. As they got closer and closer, despite the warnings given, none of the golds noticed the blues until it was too late. Around half the members of gold were out gathering resources and a small party was left behind to defend. Outnumbered, a majority of the blues chasing Spartan decided to use their numerical advantage to strike a deafening blow to gold. Gold was unprepared and did not have time to run or call for aid. During this chaotic fight, Spartan was able to flee and lose the blues chasing. He fled back to the red biome and worked on grouping up with the stragglers of his one strong nation. Now heavily outgeared, red tried to gather their strength and stay hidden as long as possible. As a failsafe, they decided to tunnel and hide in the walls when enemy members were close. Meanwhile, Gold worked on regrouping and gathering strength to fight the oncoming force and the strongest military power in this game, Blue Team. After getting kicked out of the original base, Gold Team needed to find a new spot to settle down. As they were wandering through the vast underground trying to find a home, they stumbled across the Red Biome. Unknowingly, they had ran straight into Red Team, both trying to make their home in the Red Biome. Red, seizing their advantage, decided to attack Gold Team and try to eliminate as much of them as possible to recuperate Red's strength. After a long skirmish, 
Both teams had suffered casualties, and Gold decided to retreat with the remaining members they had. With this failed attack for both Red and Gold team, Blue team's morale was reaching an all-time high. They were watching their enemies chop each other to pieces while they were becoming more and more of a superpower. And with that, day three was officially over. Realizing that Blue was by far superior in numbers and gear, Gold proposed an alliance with the red team in order to take out Blue before they got taken out, even after they had a skirmish. Desperate to seek an end to Blue, both queens set up to meet inside a wall and prevent people from eavesdropping. Eventually, they decided to come to a mutual alliance as long as Blue was the main threat. However, once Blue was no longer the prominent threat, the alliance would end. With Gold's main base being compromised, they decided to have their mutual base inside the red biome, away from the dangers of blue. Red continued to get stacked and got the necessary items needed to win, while Gold worked on enacting a plan. They decided to call this plan the Five Year Plan. The goal of this plan was to stay hidden for as long as possible, and then ambush blue when they came to red and wipe them out once and for all. They would consistently work on gathering all the items they needed in order to take out Blue while they had the chance. However, this would take time and as such, they stayed hidden for many, many hours. Part of this plan was a homegrown army. Some guys was in charge of the army, but not a human army, no. An army of dogs, named Fred. Why would they not be named Fred? A while back, when Blue was hunting Red, some guys took this chance to go into the snow biome undetected and tame some dogs as that biome was the only way to get dogs. After successfully turning to his base with inventories of lapis and a few dogs, he began to turn those lapis into enchantments and started breeding his dog army in private. During the middle of the day, Red's queen, Spartan, was offline, meaning Red had no response. Luckily, Red's second, AJXD was online and took the role as queen, but lacked the coordination and command that Spartan had. If AJX was to die, then Red's respawns would be disabled forever, even when Spartan got back online. Gold and Red had a lack of food, so all of Gold went off into the green biome to gather enough food to survive. While Gold was out adventuring, O-Trempy and False Hacker, the first and second command of Blue Team, approached the red biome in order to gather loot. However, they did not know Red was occupying the Red Biome, but would find out shortly. Red Team saw the Blues before the Blues saw them, and they decided to fight them instead of running. It was two Blues who were the most stacked members, versus six average Red members. Seeing their odds, Red decided to take a shot and jump the Blues, thinking that with a 3-1 advantage, they could successfully kill the Queen and end the Blues' reign forever. The one thing they didn't know, however, was how stacked those two blue members were. With full prot 4 diamonds and a sharp 4 swords, they heavily outgeared the reds, and with one god apple each, this did not go as planned for red. It was a massacre. Blue was able to kill 5 members of red, including AJXD, red's queen, without taking a single loss. The only member to escape was Stormstriker, who after seeing his queen fall, fled underground and tunneled away towards gold. Red was now down to one last person online, although there were a few members, including Spartan, who were offline. With respawn disabled for Red, all hope seemed lost. However, Gold's plan was taking fruition. With Red virtually defeated, it was now between Blue and Gold for who would claim the victory. Outnumbered by a large portion, the remaining members of Gold stayed in hiding and continued to stack and prepare for the final encounter. Seeing that the odds were not with Gold, some of the members of Gold decided to defect and join the Blue team, seeing that as their only chance for victory. However, while Blue had the number and the gear, Gold team had a few things going for them. They were by far the most coordinated team with the majority of the members being friends and having planned and communicated when the server was down. They also had some of the strongest fighters on the team, with four of the members consistently coming in first, second, or third place every single event we have done. 
With both the teamwork, the skill, and the gear, Gold was almost prepared for the final encounter. Gathering their resources and preparing their plan, they leaked their cords in order to successfully trap Blue and put an end to them once and for all. However, suspecting a trap, Blue Team only sent a few of the most stacked and experienced members to investigate the cords. They sent Otrempi, False Hacker, and a few other members, which was around a half or three-fifths of their total army. As they approached Red Biome, Gold started preparing their dogs and their plan. They would jump from the sky and hope to catch and kill Otrempi and False Hacker. When Blue Team entered the Red Biome, Gold Team attacked. They saw initial success with their insane gear and their dogs helping carry them. After a while of evenly matched fighting, it was obvious Gold was winning, as they began to kill the weaker members and focus more heavily on o and False Hacker. A while into the fights, the rest of Blue showed up, and now it was a 6v4. However, that did not dissuade Gold Team from playing and fighting aggressively. They also had an even fight now, as O-Bubble, seeing their chance, decided to run back to Gold Team and join up with their original team once more. After a while, False Hacker's armor broke and he was forced to retreat with o continuing to fight while some guys and others and strong members chased off False Hacker. Some guys continued to chase False Hacker for a very long time, but kept on getting delayed by all the respawns. After a while, o Trampy and other members of Blue met up and saved their queen False Hacker by killing some guys. With this encounter, the power shifted from Blue to Gold, and now Gold had the advantage in a successful attack against the Blues. It was now Gold's chance for victory. Starting off day 6, Red's Queen, Spartan, got back online to find his team devastated and only 4 members left alive of his one strong nation. These members included Stormstriker, Spartan, One Sense, and XX Master. Their team was heavily undergeared and they didn't have a queen and they were outnumbered by literally everyone. With the final day upon them, Teams got more and more aggressive, and now Gold was the one chasing down Blue. Even though Gold was outnumbered, they had better gear and coordination, making them even more confident. They only had one goal when out hunting, to kill False Hacker. With False Hacker dead, they would be the only team left alive with the Queen, giving them a huge advantage. After a while of hunting, Gold found Blue's base, where they were working on restocking and preparing. While the rest of Gold was trying to get caught up to a plan an ambush, their plans changed. False Hacker had to leave, and in his stead, he made o Trempy the Queen. With this in mind, they pushed even harder as one of their best members of Blue had just left. Interrupting Blue, Gold Team jumped and started to solo out and kill the strongest members and rid them of all their loot. A very long fight ensued, and they started to chase o Trempy, who was outnumbered, and was being chased down by Xkatsu, Gold's Queen. After a long chase, they went from being in the green biome to the snow biome. After putting up a final stand, Otrempi had fallen. With Blue no longer having a queen, they were picked off one by one until not a single member of Blue was left alive who was on the server. However, instead of celebrating this victory, as everyone would have expected, they immediately pushed into Red. Their goal was to use the advantage of surprise because Red still thought the gold was working on killing Blues, when in reality, they were hunting Red. Then, when Gold entered the Red Biome, they decided to fight the Red Team. Fighting began, but Red was able to kill two or three members of Gold. However, they were outgunned and outnumbered, and all but one eventually fell. Stormstriker was once again the last Red standing, and the only defense against the Gold's onslaught. Seeing a fleeting hope of victory, Stormstriker offered a deal. To fight Xkatsu in a fair 1v1. Gold Team had basically won anyways. What was the harm of doing a simple 1v1? Seeing no reason not to accept, Xkatsu agreed to the duel. No matter what happened after the duel, Red was going to die. But at least if Red won, they would have the moral victory of killing the Queen. We cleared everyone's stats, and the fight began in Satan's Pit. The fight started off even, with each player trading hits and dealing a decent amount of damage. However, over time, it was obvious who was winning. Stormstriker was getting a hit a lot less than Xkatsu. Eventually, Xkatsu's armor broke and he fell to Stormstriker. With Xkatsu falling, Red had won the moral victory. 
overcoming all odds to kill Gold's queen. From ragged beginnings and through tough lands, Gold was able to overcome all odds in order to secure themselves a place on the throne and ensure lasting peace. Through strategy, teamwork, and fighting, Gold had won over the entire world. Maybe, next time, you'll be able to make a difference.